This video is one of a series of four training videos that have been created by the Scotland's Rural Past Project to provide guidance on different archaeological survey techniques. You may also like to watch our other videos on using GPS, using a plane table and sketching. In this video, you'll learn how to use the tape and offset method to create a scaled drawing of a site. Tape and offset survey can be carried out in a wide range of situations, but ideal conditions are relatively level ground and calm weather. The method can easily be extended over large areas and is particularly suited to recording low-lying remains, such as earthworks or turf-covered building footings, as we have here at Burclough in the Borders. As with any measured survey, you would ideally have produced a sketch of the site first and studied any documents such as maps and aerial photographs. Tape and offset requires only limited and affordable resources, including measuring tapes, marker pegs, drawing board or clipboard, drawing media, set square and gridded paper. These are relatively lightweight so tape and offset is better suited for more remote sites. You could use either tape and offset or plane tabling for surveying in more accessible sites. Tape and offset surveying involves measuring distances along a network or grid of straight lines made up from tape measures strung out across the site. The grid starts with one tape measure, the baseline, and other tapes are then strung out parallel and perpendicular to this to form a grid. The distance from the baseline to specific features are measured and then plotted at a given scale onto drafting film overlying graph paper or directly onto graph paper. For more information on how to choose the appropriate scale, you can see our plane tabling video. In this instance, the team are using a scale of 1 to 200. First of all, choose where to set up your baseline. If your site has a definite axis, then try and use this. In this case, we're going to set our baseline along the long axis of a building on a relatively even part of the slope. Our baseline also intersects many other features. Variation in slope will not make a significant difference to tape and offset survey results. To set up the baseline, you need to create a straight line using at least three ranging poles. We are using ranging poles which have slits at 90 degree angles called cross-site ranging poles. By viewing through the slit you can ensure the poles are in line with each other. You can alternatively simply line up the poles by eye. Remember that the baseline should be longer than the area you want to draw. Take a tape measure and secure it to a peg at one end of the line. Then run it along to the far end, pull it as tight as possible and secure it with something like bulldog clips to a peg. It's close. OK, we'll pin that at 43. That probably will actually pin it over the top, won't it? There you go. Then, anchor it at strategic points along the line, for example at regular intervals. This is particularly useful if it's windy on site. Once you've done that, you need to set up your secondary baseline, which intersects the first at right angles. Back to 
There are a number of techniques you can use to ensure you have a right angle. One of the most commonly used techniques is a 3-4-5 triangle. Remember Pythagoras' rule for a right-angled triangle. The sum of the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the square of the other two sides. So, 3 squared add to 4 squared equals 5 squared. This equation can be applied to any size of triangle. For longer lines, a larger triangle will prove most accurate. For example, 6, 8, 10. If you don't have a calculator, it's easiest to use round numbers to create your triangle. However, with a calculator, you can create any size of triangle at any point along your line. Once you've created your triangle and found the line perpendicular to the baseline, you can extend it as far as you require your secondary baseline to be. You can check the angle with a set square as shown. Now set up your drawing board with a north point and site information such as name, date, grid reference and scale. Then mark your baselines on the drawing at the correct scale. If you're using graph paper, you do not need a scale ruler. Remember that zero on your tape measure represents zero on your drawing. Draw your baseline somewhere near the centre of the page so you'll be able to fit in the whole site. When you're ready to start plotting, think about what your points will be. For example, the corners of buildings and openings. Measure from the point of interest to the baseline. If you swing the tape measure back and forward along the baseline, you can find the closest point, which will be at a right angle to the baseline. 18.5 and 2.57. 18.5. Plot this on your page and move on to the next point. And 2.57. Join up the points as you go by looking at the features to see what shape they are. Lovely. Next one. You can now see your plan beginning to emerge. In our plan, you can see where the points of interest have been plotted in relation to the baseline. Remember there may be more than one point of interest along any one chosen offset. As your plan develops and you finish plotting points in one area, 
You can then start extending the grid to the rest of the site using the principles of offset. You can either do this incrementally or, if you have enough tape measures, you can grid a whole site at once. Once all the points have been taken, you will have a basic site plan which looks something like this. Once you have an outline, you should go round the site and add in the details to your plan. For example, hashers and individual stones and drawing conventions to indicate any walls. Where there are earthworks, they are shown with hashers depicting the top and the bottom of the slope. You should have taken points from the top and bottom of the slope. You would then follow this line and draw in hashers to indicate the direction of the slope and the distance. The hashers are lines thicker at one end than another, with the thick end depicting the top of the slope, and they should be drawn at a right angle from the top of the slope. Your finished picture should also differentiate between features made of turf, turf and stone, or stone, using drawing conventions. So now you've learned how to survey a site using tape and offset. You can set up a baseline and use it to create a grid over a site. You can measure points of interest from this grid and create a measured plan of the site. To learn more about sketching, using a handheld GPS or how to carry out a plane table survey, you can take a look at our other videos.